They are everyday heroes in Puerto Penasco, often the first of the first responders in many emergency situations. When you visit, they are here for you, too. We go inside Cruz Roja, the Mexican Red Cross, on this edition of the Rocky Point Podcast. Welcome, Puerto Penasco lovers. This is the Rocky Point Podcast with award-winning host, Thomas Baldrick. Hello, I'm Thomas Baldrick. Thanks for being with us for the Rocky Point Podcast. The point of this episode is to formally introduce you to the group of people, special people, who could be your best friends when you need the most here in Puerto Penasco. And the hope is that once you know about the important role the Mexican Red Cross plays, you will be more inclined to respect them and more inclined to support them. So first we'll explore the Mexican Red Cross as a whole, and then we'll dive in specifically to the presence of the team here in Puerto Penasco. We're delighted to have our first guest with us. His name is Ramel Bustamante. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas, for uh, inviting us to your podcast and, and share a little bit uh, about what we do and what it uh, our our organization is all about. Let's start off with the mission and vision of this organization. The the vision is uh, we are a humanitarian organization that provides a service to all the public needs. Uh, we are part of the International uh, Red Cross uh, organization, and we serve uh, with them along uh, on different uh, scenarios like disasters in Mexico, all over Mexico, including uh, in the States, such, uh, you know, hurricanes and stuff like that. And we do so many other things here locally, too. At the core of everything, there is a fundamental principle with the Red Cross. Could you explain? Our fundamental principle is to help people. No matter what, no distinctions. Um, for every call, we will be there all the time. So that's that's the main the main reason we we have no distinctions. Uh, we provide a service without knowing if uh, you're gonna have money to pay a service or not. If you're gonna, I mean, we do this all volunteer, and we we're always there with no distinctions at all. And uh, so every call we we're there. So there's no politics, no Mexican, no American, no uh, religion, no prejudice of any kind. No, not at all. Uh, here, there's no politics. There's uh, the the organization is not related to any govern governmental mm -hmm. uh, institutions or uh, any politics uh, at all from Mexico or the U.S. or not at all. I mean, it's a completely separate thing. So how is the Mexican Red Cross structured? Okay, it's so structured by different sections. We depend from the Sonoran state uh, section, but it's not the state, uh, the governmental side. It's, it's the organization state. Right. Okay. Everything is customized for the community that it serves. For example, Puerto Penasco is very different in size and just feel from Hermosillo. Uh -huh. So can you talk about how, how you, you get to know the community and so you can better serve that community? Yeah, well, we have a great team of uh, volunteers and people that has been serving for many years. You know, they know very well the clinics, the sections, and how to be there the fastest possible to take care of a uh, uh, an injury or something. Uh, we have a few organizations from the states that help us with donations and stuff like that because uh, mainly uh, our services are m more likely free. We're very pleased that when people um, receive one of our services, they, they give us a donation. So, But if they can't, we don't charge. Also, a number of programs to serve people. Could you touch on some of the key programs? Well, we have a lot of programs. Uh, we have uh, Right now, we have a an x-ray program that uh, it's free for people for the next two months. We have, uh, you know, a very low cost medical uh, service in, in the station. And, and uh, we do have, uh, obviously, the ambulances program that is, uh, you know, the main the main thing over here. We did over 1,100 services in the last month and uh, as a first response uh service wow so we just did a, a cpr with over 1200 kin kindergarten kids it was uh, pretty amazing through a song we taught them how to do cprs you know and a little teddy bear and stuff like that it yeah. was funny and also how to how to call 911 you know in case uh, they see some event that they need to call an ambulance we're putting together right now a uh, program for training uh for all the resorts and restaurants so we're going to start doing that in 
in case uh, something happened, they can react and and do something while uh, the ambulance gets here. No disrespect to my home of the United States of America, but the, the American Red Cross is a much lower profile organization. You hear about them uh, generally when there's a, you know, a natural disaster, exactly. uh, uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, something like that. But here in Mexico, the Red Cross is so high profile. Here in Mexico, uh, the Red Cross is actually the first, uh, is it the, the ambulance services is, is the main thing. It's like, uh, what, like, uh, the paramedics and ambulance services is always a Red Cross. So in, in, if you use a car accident, if it's an explosion, if it's a fire, if it's a broken bone, if it's a, a heart attack in a house, in a hotel, whatever, we always there. So we do uh, all kinds of services. Uh, we do rescues uh, from car accidents uh, through, you know, ATVs and all kinds of stuff. I call you the first of the first responders. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Yes, we, and we try to do that. We try to be there. and But we also want to uh, train people on how, how to be the first response while we get there because it's very important. You know, we have a, an event that a uh, an American citizen uh, passed away, a, you know, a few weeks ago in, in one of the resorts here. And when we got there, he was already uh, eight minutes gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the... The personnel didn't know what to do, and and I think that we could do better and train people to you know do this. I mean, we were so fortunate that uh, our team uh, got over there to CPR, and they were over there for over twenty minutes. So they they, they bring him back, and the guy is alive, is back in Arizona, uh, happy, and and we're so happy that we were able to do that. <laughs> After eight minutes, he was gone. But uh, we realized that we need to train people and how to do things before we get there because it only took us 10 minutes to get there and he was gone already the eight. Wow. So what yeah. a great story. Yeah. Great story of success. And I know you have success stories every day. Um, we just talked about the differences between the Red Cross in the U.S. and Mexico. Talk about how sometimes you work together in the case of a disaster. Yeah. Well, you know, in case of a natural disaster, if it's like a Mexico situation, you will receive people from the States, right, uh, that help us in all over the world, you know, like in, in case of Oaxaca and Mexico City earthquakes and everything and some hurricanes in Cancun and some other places. But also we have uh, the opportunity to serve and to help like uh, when we went uh, over to uh, Texas. And the last, uh, the, that was the very last one. We sent three people out, uh, from here, from Rocky Point, to help over there for two weeks. So we, they call us, and we, we make sure we go there. Like we said earlier, no no prejudice, no American, no Mexican, just people in need. No walls in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't touch that one. <laughs> Take that one away. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. What do you want foreigners who visit Mexico to know about the Red Cross here and know what that difference is when you cross the border? Well, it's it's completely a different ballgame. It's I mean, we we run Red Cross in a different way than in the States. Like I said, mm-hmm. it's, as long as you when it's as soon as you cross the border, uh, the Red Cross is going to be the first response all the time. And I would like them to know that we live on donations. We are pretty much run this organization and all the services we do with donations. I mean, we, we have no uh, other source of income. Uh, we do some trainings. We do some stuff. We, we pretty much receive donations out of it, too. So uh, I would like them to know that. And if they're willing to donate, uh, you know, they can contact all the time at the, at the station. And uh, if they have medicines or they know anybody that can donate whatever medical supplies of, you know, a cast or something, whatever, crutches, crutches, whatever that we can uh, let some other people use while they're here. Uh, you know, we truly appreciate all, all the help that we can get. Ramo Bustamante, God bless you in the in the wonderful work you do. Thank you for being here and uh, and explaining the Red Cross so well from your level. Thank you very much, Thomas, for inviting us. We'll be right back with a look at the Red Cross right here in Puerto Penasco when we continue on the Rocky Point Podcast. Stay with us. 
Rocky Point lovers, our ship has finally come in, thanks to cruise and maritime voyages. Our friends from the UK have invested heavily in turning the longtime dream of a cruise destination into reality. Introducing the treasures of the Sea of Cortez cruise. This one-of-a-kind experience sails round-trip from Puerto Penasco, embarking on an 11-night discovery of some of Mexico's best-kept secrets. Enjoy breathtaking natural wonders, amazing wildlife, spectacular islands, and destinations such as Mazlatan, Cabo San Lucas, La Paz, and more. Sail in an intimate, luxurious setting on board the Astoria, a lovely ship with room for only 550 passengers. She features delicious onboard cuisine, activities, entertainment, and service second to none. There are only six voyages between December and February, so book now and turn Puerto Penasco's dream cruise into yours by taking the treasures of the Sea of Cortez cruise. As part of the Rocky Point podcast, you can save two hundred dollars by getting a free one category upgraded cabin for two just use the code rpp that's a two hundred dollar value with the code rpp don't worry you'll find all this information on our website at rockypointpodcast.com Discover your slice of Rocky Point Paradise at Sonoran Sun 510 East. This all-newly redone one-bedroom condo has the beachiest theme in Puerto Penasco, spectacular views of the Sea of Cortez, and spectacular online reviews from real guests like these. Exceptional, adorable condo with attentive service, amazing in every way. This place is unbelievable. You will not want to leave. Beautiful, clean, comfortable, and cozy. We will definitely be back. Sonoran Sun 510 East has five-star ratings on Airbnb and VRBO. With perfect tens on Booking.com, the site made the condo one of its top picks, calling it a Booker's favorite. Want a place to relax, rejuvenate, rekindle romance? Just search Sonoran Sun 510 East to watch the YouTube videos. Book online or book direct and save by calling 602-688-3330. That's 602-688-3330. Create your own amazing guest experience. Stay and play at Sonor and Sun 510 East. Now back to the Rocky Point Podcast. Welcome back to the Rocky Point Podcast. I'm Thomas Baldrick, joined now by Red Cross rock stars here in Puerto Penasco. I'd like to introduce Mr. Fernando Vasquez and Ms. Mary Fer Estrada. Great to have you both here. Thank you for inviting us. It's, it's pretty cool that um, we get uh, this kind of like kind of advertisement uh, for the Red Cross, we we usually don't get uh, that much re- ma- uh, that much recognition with the society, but it's it's good. Thank you. You deserve it. And I wish maybe when we're done, if the two of you, I really want to learn how to roll my R's, and it's just the Cruz de Roja. I can't I can't say that, but I so want to. Right, that <laughs> Cruz Roja. See, I can't. <laughs> you would be doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, Mary Fair, let's start with you about how your team and why your team is so incredibly popular in this town. You are very well respected and, and adored. Yeah. So what makes incredibly popular, I think so that we are the first and the only option to the first aid, the emergency care and natural disasters and trying on civil people. And in according with the police sector, um, maintaining excellent level of probation, training, and the uh, emergency services in our community. So we have a lot of reason, but I think that this is uh, more important. So Fernando, I know you come from Monterrey, Mexico, but here we are in Puerto Penasco on the shores of the Sea of Cortez. Yes, sir. I know the stingrays are pesky fellows. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty common uh, call that we get dispatched. Very common. But drowning's not so much. Yeah, you know, drowning, it, it doesn't really happen as much. Um, we have really few cases of people drowning in Playa Bonita. But uh, what we, we get called the most is for uh, sting rays. They usually get sting on, on their foot or on their toes, and it's not that bad. People think is that stingers are poisonous or venomous, but they are not. For the treatment... We do uh, a procedure called infiltration, and we do it with local anesthesia. We have a little syringe, a little needle on the affected part, and uh, just put um, the affected part on really warm, really, really hot, warm water. 
and that will help a lot. Let's discuss uh, Fernando Americans and the 911 calls and how you manage that level of treatment if someone needs it. Uh, we follow a protocol. You will dial 911 dispatch here in Piasco. They will ask you all the information about what happened, how that happened, and where you at. Sometimes uh, dispatch will tell you, okay, calm down, or okay, uh, he's bleeding. Um, do you have a clean shirt? Do you have a clean cloth? Please uh, apply like a direct pressure to, to the wound. Sometimes they will guide you. It's important to know that you may talk to multiple people when you call 911. That first call may not be here in Puerto Penasco. Right. Um, sometimes it gets transferred to Nogales. Yeah. And from Nogales, it gets transferred here to, to Rocky Point. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong. That's how the system works. Yes, sir. The other thing that you do that's so interesting to me, based on the good hearts of people like you and the Red Cross, is you will go and you will make an assessment of the person who's in need. And then you will customize where you take them based on what is the best place for them to be treated and what works for them in terms of insurance or whatever. Could you get into that? That's really important. That's right. Our protocol says that we don't have to drive them to the nearest hospital, but instead to the most proper hospital so they can give them the proper treatment they need. Uh, usually we, we will ask if they have insurance. Sometimes we say they, they say, yes, I have insurance, but I don't know if it covers me in Mexico as well. Right. So there are um, some uh, private clinics that they accept your insurance. They will give you like a little paper that says, this is how much you're going to pay and you have to pay for it. But then once you go back to the United States, you get to to tell to your, to your insurance company, hey, I paid this much. Can you please give me the, my money back? Got it. That's how it usually works. If not, um, you just got to pay for your whole treatment. And if you don't have any money to pay, uh, we will usually transfer you to the general hospital where the healthcare is free. Fantastic. Mary, for, uh, we touched on it a little bit uh, before with Rommel and yourself, but there's such a variety of programs you have, some of which are very important and very special to women and children. Your colleague Faustino invited me to the CPR for kids and to see the little ones out there, the little boys and girls in their, <laughs> in their little doctor outfits and their little nurse outfits. Ah, and, and you teach them CPR at such a young age you make such a difference with them. They could save a life. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, it is. So uh, this is this is really awesome. So um, this is a reason that we have one area than for the young people. Mm -hmm. So we have one program to the eight to seven years old, and here it would propose is teaching the little ones on how to know to save a life and uh, attitude to service. Because this is really important if you want to uh, make the paramedic when you have the 18 years old. And this is the reason we have one area in this. And the name is the Juventud in Spanish. Mm -hmm. But it's the area for the young people. So the Red Cross is great with women and children, but also the entire family. And this program you have called the Family Link Program, it's a different view of the things we hear in America. Right now in the United States, illegal immigration from Central America coming through Mexico, crossing the border into the U.S. is a huge news story on a given day. You have a much different spin on how that works here. So this program started in Africa because of the Civil War. Um, the Africans started migrating to Europe. When they migrated, they didn't know uh, anything about their families, and their families didn't know where they were at, if they were good, if, if they were taking care of themselves. So the Red Cross started this program so we can link the loved ones. In case of Mexico, as you say, there's uh, been a lot of immigration from El Salvador, from Honduras. They usually get stuck on the way. That's why the Red Cross uh, started this program here in Mexico, and we provide them food, we provide them shelter, and if they know, for example, the phone number of any other families, we will link them via a cell phone. Just the so family. they can tell their loved ones, I'm okay, here's where I am, etc. Yes, sir. I know there's one particular story that's incredibly powerful, and it's one a lot of Americans probably heard of a man who served bravely and proudly in the United States military. Yes, and then despite that military service, he got deported to Mexico. Talk about how the Red Cross here helped that man in the Family Link program. This gentleman from the military, 
um, got deported. Uh, he was in California. So the Red Cross here in Rocky Point um, tried to help him because he wanted to, he, uh, to see his dad um, that he was in North Carolina. So um, this guy, despite uh, he didn't have any money, he didn't have any phone, he didn't have any ID, he came to Red Cross asking if we could help him. So we said, you know, no problem. Um, we contact uh, the American Red Cross and the American Red Cross gave um, this gentleman over um, in North Carolina, his father, uh, they, they granted uh, permission for him to come here to Rocky Point and that was less than a day. Uh, we accomplished that uh, in just one day and this gentleman uh, from, from North Carolina came here to Rocky Point to see his, uh, his son and they reunited after... It was eight years of not seeing each other. So um, when they reunited the next day, um, unfortunately, um, th his dad died. But uh, we gave them the chance to reunite once again. That is a powerful story. And the fact that the Mexican Red Cross, the American Red Cross worked together. I understand Homeland Security even got involved in that, got yes, the sir. man here. It's just people doing the right thing regardless of borders. Yes, sir. Talk about the Red Cross in Puerto Penasco and, and people coming here for fun. Maybe they, they put their party hat on or their party sombrero on a little too <laughs> tight and have a little too much alcohol. Oh, yes, sir. If you're going to drive, don't, don't excess on alcohol. Take your seatbelt on. If you're going to be on a rhino or on a four-wheeler um, out in the sand, wear a helmet Make sure everyone has a seatbelt on. So you really need to take care. I know you're on a vacation. You guys are on a vacation. And that's good. You know, that's good. That's very, um, we respect that. Okay. But um, we we care on not only our, our society here in Mexico, but also for the American society. What I want to ask both of you is, for me, coming from Arizona, I will see the Red Cross at Sonoita. If I give a donation to Sonoita, where does that money go? That money will go straight to Sonoita Red Cross. And if you will, uh, if you give money to the Rocky Point Red Cross, that money will just go to Rocky Point Red Cross. Or how do you want visitors to Puerto Penasco to think of the Red Cross or view the Red Cross? Well, Thomas, this is a. Uh really difficult question because the answer is really important but i think so we would like to see you as like your friends or like your family why not so you know we are a dedicated institution to help people in any situations so mm, we are the health professionals and who love what we are really love it and just take care of them and i love working on their logo and we are all brothers this is uh william lemon and the good words the two of you and your colleagues you are heroes real life heroes but even heroes need help right yes sir so talk about how that help makes a difference here in town well um when we get usually donations of any kind it really really makes a difference we are pretty much on our own so when we receive donations we have something to work with because we are a toll free service we don't charge we don't charge for our service we do it voluntarily and we do it with our hearts because we we love what we do just like uh marie first says we really love what we do so when we have equipment to do it we'll be even happier to do it because we will that means that we are going to bring a better attention to you guys and to the Mexican public. We're going to bring a better attention, a better medical attention, and that's what makes the difference. Yes. Well said. We'll leave it there. So many people love what you do, me included. I am honored and delighted that you came here to talk about what you do. Thank you for what you do for the local people. Thank you what you do for the visiting foreigners. Thank you for what you do with your God-given talents and the kindness in your hearts. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ander Contraria. Thank you for inviting us. If you can, support the Red Cross in Rocky Point. Someone will need them, 
God forbid one day it could be you or a loved one. And if you enjoy this podcast, please support us. You can do it by subscribing, downloading episodes, leaving a five-star review, and connecting with us and sharing in social media. You'll be eligible to win prizes and know you help keep us going and growing. Visit RockyPointPodcast.com for more info about this and the Red Cross. I'm Thomas Baldrick. Until next time, adios, friends. We appreciate you being part of the Rocky Point Podcast.